Hello guys, sorry for the delay on the video, but uh, today I'm going to be making a video how to balance school with cycle training. So, just a bit of background, uh, I started cycling pretty much a couple months after my GCSEs, but I wasn't really training properly until the start of this year, so that would be about five months before second year college A2 exams. So I'm just going to try and help so the people to try and figure out where you can fit in your training, maybe give an idea of what to do. I'm not a coach, I'm not going to claim to be like having all this knowledge, but I think I can help a lot of people who don't know where to start in terms of training and balancing that with school. So let's get into the video. So I tried to break it down into four segments which I think are appropriate for the video. The first one is time, so managing your time and when you're going to actually do the training. Because I think that's just the most important thing to look at first really, especially with school, because it's pretty much black and white, you're either at school or you're not at school. So that's pretty simple. So I, I put together a little spreadsheet to show sort of the, the general average person. I just put it, I mean some people end up three, some people end up four. Just call it four. By the time you've got home and you know, been able to change into your cycling kit anyway, that's, that's reasonable I, I think. So time to train. Um, you've got an hour or two really, realistically, after school each day. And because you might have homework, you might have, well, you've got dinner, which alone takes, call it an hour to take for that. You've got homework, you've got a few other things. So between one and two hours is what you have, which to be honest is enough anyway. It, 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 like you wouldn't really need to do, especially if you're an under 16, you definitely wouldn't, you just would not need to do much more than that at all really. So that's, that's all right, I think. And then obviously on the weekends, Provided you have no other commitments, you can train as much as you like. So a nice big like club run length ride. Yeah, and if you're doing one well Saturday and Sunday, then that's 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 good stuff. You're gonna go far. Yeah. So that's I mean the time is pretty relatively simple really. I mean some people choose to train in the morning. Now if you can wake up at 5 a.m. and get two hours done before school, then well you're a god because I I can't do that. I cannot do that at all. I don't understand how you could do how anyone could do that every day. So yeah, but if you can do that then go for it because that's that's quite quite a lucky thing to be able to do. If you're in sixth form or or college, you might be lucky enough like I was to have some uh, free study periods which perfectly coincide to, to let you go on longer rides. So I was really fortunate. In my second year of college, I finished at 12 o'clock on Tuesday and Wednesday, which is awesome because it allowed me to do a three hour ride after school in the daylight, which is really nice and just, yeah, it's a really lucky commodity. If you have free periods at the end of the day, you can you obviously use that and then when you do need to study, you can do that later on. But it's, I find it's really useful, especially if, like me, you don't like riding at night. That's something to bear in mind. I wouldn't count commutes as training. I mean, unless you really do like a big commute, but even then, I, I wouldn't really want to shower after a hard ride to get to school. So I did 15 minutes to get to school, if that and I just, just, I wouldn't count it as training at all because especially if you're going easy, you just don't, separate thing and personally, I, I don't mix them. Obviously, if you, if you commute to work and you can shower, then you can sort of do something more intense. So the next category is what you're actually going to be doing during those hours to make up the time. So I think that's obviously pretty important for the maximum training benefit. You're not just going to be waddling around on your bike for, for a few hours each week. You want to be training with some focus at least. I mean, you don't need to be doing intervals every day, especially when you're that young. I mean, who am I to talk? I'm 18. What? Anyway, but yeah, I, I wouldn't, you don't want to be doing intervals all the time. For me, and I think for what most people do, on the weekends, it's pretty set. You have a club run. If you're not in a club, you should join a club. And most clubs have Sunday club runs which are ideal because they, they all have different groups with different speeds, so that's quite good. Like our, our fast group, ooh, it gets a bit crazy, a bit crazy on the hills sometimes. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty, it can be a pretty intense ride sometimes. Yeah, especially if everyone just is feeling it that day. It's, it's a bit of hit and miss with, with the club run. Sometimes it's gonna be chill. Next week it's gonna be like a flipping race. So anyway, that's, that's always a bit of fun. And then Saturdays, I'm really fortunate I have the tri ride near me, or that's what it's called. It's essentially a chain gang, and from house to house, door to door, it's about 75 miles. So it's perfect, three and a half hours, and it's solid training, probably the best training I have at all, really. It's just like a, a really hard chain gang, and yeah, it's, it, chain gangs are probably the best 
form of training, especially when you're with people who are stronger than you. They will push you to your limit, which is just, it's absolutely perfect. You just keep taking turns, and well, until you get dropped, and then you've reached your limit, and that's just such a fantastic way to train, because you're constantly at your limit, trying to push it up. So that's really good. So that's, that's sort of, the weekends are, in my opinion, relatively simple, because you've got those chain games, you've got those group rides, which much easier to do them than to try and do something on your own, especially with the motivation of other people. It's just, I think it's a no-brainer, always do the group rides. On the weekdays, obviously you're restricted with time, say from four onwards. You could obviously go out on your own, do some intervals. If you're fortunate enough like me, I had a Tuesday night chain gang, which was really good. So Tuesdays, 6 p.m., and that was a good like two and a half hour ride door to door. And that was another chain gang, same thing. And it's just it's really good training. Other than that, your only options are really to ride on your own or with friends or something, or to actually try and do some intervals for purpose. I'm not an expert, I'm just trying to share my insights. But if you're an under 16, I think you'd be better off if you can to try and find some friends to ride with. You've got that competition between you. You could like do some hills, and you know, I think it's a much more fun ride, and to be honest, you will enjoy it much more. Don't get me wrong, intervals aren't terrible, but when you're always doing intervals, it can get a bit tiresome. Obviously, in the winter, at four o'clock, it gets dark, so you can either do the turbo or go outside. Personally, I would much rather do the turbo, because riding at night is just, it's a bit, I just don't trust other cars for the most part, so I'd usually rather, I'd rather go on the turbo, especially with Zwift nowadays, it's like, oh, it's, it's pretty pretty immersive, you know. Zwift is a really, really good training tool in my opinion. And especially the fact that it now includes... It gives you workouts that you can do. So you can just pick a workout and off you go. It's fantastic. And they really are. They are. They have some tough workouts, I'm telling you. So for an under 16, most of the races you're going to be doing as an under 16 will be crits. So realistically, you should train for crits. There's no point really until you're a junior or maybe just before you're a junior training for road races when as an under 16 there are almost no road races so most things are going to be an hour so doing an hour after school of intense intense stuff that's just going to be ideal it's going to be perfect and you just find an hour long workout on Zwift or something maybe a bit longer here and there but that, that will set you up really well do it super intense and that, that is good same and then for the weekends you've got the longer rides to back up your endurance a bit so like if you're doing a long ride on Saturday and Sunday with with intense rides during the week as an under 16 you will be flying I'm telling you you will be absolutely flying by the time you get to be a junior like really you'll be really up there in the in the national series races so that that's definitely something to think about. And then as a junior, obviously there are quite a few, I mean, you have access to all the senior races as well, so there are the road races to bear in mind. So you want to be starting to do a bit longer rides, maybe like, yeah, still your three, four hour rides on the weekends, and then maybe two to three hours during the week, week day. I think the sort of common standard is a rest day on Monday, a rest day on Friday, and then you do three days in a row, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then you've got your long rides on the weekend, and that's sort of it gives you rested up at the right time. If you're wanting to target specific weaknesses, it's not as complicated as you might think. For example, if you want to get better at sprinting, you should just train with sprinting and do more sprints. That's, that's, that's it really. And if you want to get better with your five minute power to be able to last on those attacks and not just fade straight away, then you want to do like three to five minute intervals and you can, I mean, you can Google it, they're like three minute intervals or something and you'll find something that will, you'll find a killer session somewhere. So next is priorities and this is something that I had to come to terms with much to my frustration around um, I want to say April this year and it was, as much as it was frustrating at the end of the day getting the good results at school is probably more important than missing a race or two. It might just be me, it might be for everyone, I don't know. But I personally find a really strong association between physical fatigue after doing a ride and mental fatigue. So like, for example, after I do a really tough ride, the next day I won't really be able to concentrate as well as I normally would, I don't think. So I found that, especially coming up to exams and revision, I had to really lower, lower my, my riding, which is quite frustrating, and miss out on a few races, which really it's quite upsetting, but in the long run I think that was definitely the right thing to do, and it was worth doing. I mean, some people, they find that they feel refreshed and focused after they do a hard ride. I don't know how that is. Lucky, lucky for you people. If you can do a hard ride and then the next day be more focused on your exam, well, that's... you're lucky. You should prioritise the exams for revision, because that, at the end of the day, that's... what's the point in going to school if you're not going to really 
get the best out of yourself. Finally, it's sort of it's similar to priorities, but exam season. As it came into the exams, I lowered it right down. Like I said, I'm pretty sure I, I find a correlation between physical fatigue and mental fatigue. So yeah, I lowered that right down for the exams. I pretty much was only doing a couple of rides a week at that point, which was yeah, it was a bit frustrating. But that's yeah, that's what it is, and that's what I did, and it was worth it because I got A star, two A's. I got my grades, I got my uni place, and I've actually deferred that uni place for a year because I simply want to do cycling. I just want to give that 100% for a year and see, see where it takes me. That's, that's the truth. That's, that is the dream, to be a pro cyclist. And I, it, sounds, it sounds weird saying that and people might criticise me, but that, that is the dream for sure. And I'm hoping a year of dedicating 100% to it will help me get there just a little bit faster. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you got something out of the video. I hope I managed to convey my thoughts across well enough. And yeah, I hope you appreciate the video. If you liked it, give it a like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.